Howdy YouTube, Mark DeRemer here from Refurbished Gentleman, and today on RGTV, you're going to be watching a step-by-step -step tutorial of one of my finishes. Although this finish is about three to four years old, and some of the products, if not all of the products within the video, are products I no longer use. So what you're going to see is in the video description below and throughout the video, for the supplies used, I'm going to give you what I recommend currently. The main reason for that is if you contact me and say, hey Mark, I'm working through your finish, and I just, it's whatever you said to do is not working, if you use what I recommend, it's gonna be easier for me to help you walk through those steps. If you use some of these older products that I no longer use, it'll be harder for me because some products change, they change their formulas, all that different kind of things, it just makes it harder for me to walk through it with you. Does that mean you can't use your products or the products within the video? No, but I just wanted to be clear before you jump into the video that What's actually in the video is not going to be what I recommend based on those facts. So I hope you enjoy the video. I look forward to seeing anything that you guys create from this. And be sure to tag Refurbished Gentlemen on all my social media if you do decide to try it. Okay, so our first coat is gonna be cocoa. And basically what I chose for this rustic barn door was the hues that have some of the brown basically to them. You know, like depending on how you use French linen, it could look more gray, it could look more brown. So if you use dark wax, it goes towards the brown. Old ochre has a, you know, it's not, it's not quite off white. It's a little bit further down than that. So that's kind of what I did with this. So we're gonna start with whatever color wood you have. This happens to be a little bit more of an orange color than the sample piece I'm gonna have for you. Um, but it would be the same concept. So you're darker, and then as you go up, it's gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then we're gonna hit it at the end with the dark wax to bring back all the depth and darkness from, you know, throughout the piece. So the first step is Pretty simple and straightforward. We're going to get one coat of cocoa on here, okay? And I'm pushing pretty hard and down on this piece right now, and you can probably hear the table shaking, because the idea is, is to do it in streaks. And this is going to be a, a common theme for this finish. You're going to hear throughout this whole video is doing it in streaks. And there's a reason for that. We're looking to create our very own wood grain ourselves. You know, if your piece already has some wood grain, like as far as texture wise is concerned, we're gonna cover it up. The texture might still be there of the grain, but the color is gonna be gone almost. So we're gonna create our own. And honestly, this cocoa is really awesome because it looks cool all by itself with this kind of streaky, half-painted look. I actually almost just left it like that when I first saw it. I was like, wow, that cocoa went on really good. And then with a darker wood, it kind of gave it its own cool finish all by itself. But this is a it, folks. Like I said at the beginning, this, this process for this finish is not that difficult and uh, not as time consuming and or paint consuming. Especially with the fact that it's kind of time, sens time sensitive because you know Annie's paint dries super fast. You can't play with this for too very long if you're trying to keep these streaks in here real good because it'll dry on you. So you see I'm going pretty fast and I've already covered this whole thing pretty good. Now, if you don't get down on all the cracks and crevices, don't worry about it because those are gonna get hit later anyway with more paint and more wax. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this up so you can see it. Like this. Look you know how pretty that is, right? So, the idea, again, slap the paint on there real fast and then you only need a little bit and then you're just going up and down and you're pushing your brush down into the wood a little bit harder so it's kind of peeling it back off, kind of what you don't want normally. You're trying to cover as much as you can. Well, in this case, we're not trying to cover as much as we can because we're trying to peel a little bit off 
to get that cool wood grained look all throughout. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. First coat, I mean really just that easy. Just make sure you have all the coverage you want the first time around. The first time you dip your paintbrush in there, you get on here, you get to it. Because if you go over it a second time, as most of you might already know, you hit Amy Sloan's paint a second time, it covers a lot. So if you want these streaks to stay, this initial coat, you want to try to do it right the first time. Because if like, you know, oh man, I didn't get enough paint right there, and you try to go over top of it, now you're going to have a completely covered area instead of the cool grain look with the wood from below and the paint over top. Now, I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, when you do that second coat of paint, it really covers well with any stone's paint. So just, again, make sure you're not messing around, you're not, you know, cooking dinner or something in the middle of this one, because once you paint it on, you want to really make sure that you're getting those streaks in there. And this is going to dry pretty darn quick. So that's it. That's it for the first coat. And this is where the, the, the fun of this finish comes in because, you know, it didn't take that long. It was quick. The next couple are going to be dry brushed and we're going to kind of do it in the same fashion. And you'll see it'll start taking on these layers of color and almost have that wood grain texture look. So that's it for now. Okay, so we have our beautifully dried, streaky, painted on cocoa over our wood surface. That's our first step. And as you can see, it dried. I mean, even I thought right when I initially did this, the cocoa over the, the dark wood with the streaks looked good by itself, just like that. But I knew I wanted to have more of a really weathered wood kind of look. So I knew I was gonna have to add some layers. So I ended up going with French linen and old ochre for the dry brushing portion. So the first was a wet, but very deliberate as far as how it's put on one thin layer in streaks to show the wood beneath as your first. So now we have two colors already, right off the bat, which is kind of what I was thinking of starting with. And then we went into, you know, like, I don't know, lighter colors if you want to call it that knowing it was going to end with dark. So, this is what we got right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to do the, the dry brush portion just to kind of show you how I'm doing it. Uh, basically, I got my French linen, little chip brush, and we're just going to dry brush it on. And it's going to be the same motion going with the grain, or what we've now created as the grain. The grain is our brush strokes, and we're just going to go with that. And you'll see how exactly I do it. I'm going to zoom in to show it a little bit better. Okay, so chip brush, paper plate, aluminum foil, my little thing, instead of throwing away paper plates every time, just a little slip of aluminum foil thrown on there, and you just throw the aluminum foil away. So, just gonna dip the ends, just like so, flip, dip the other side, scrape some off on the plate, like that. And then, as a last step, I'm hoping you can see my blue shop towel over here, I'm gonna drag a little off on my shop towel too, just because initially you wanna make sure you don't have too much. You can always add, but to take away is kind of a pain in the butt. And I don't know if you saw I'm flipping as I'm going because both sides had paint on them. So I wanna evenly distribute out the paint that I put on there. Okay, so obviously the edges are gonna get more just because you know, it's raised area, so it's gonna get a little bit more of the paint. So you can see the edges got a little bit, but it kind of gives it a good effect because you're pulling from the outside in or the outside all the way across. So it's starting a little darker and then lightening up as you go. And then you start from the other side doing the same thing. So you're from both sides, you got darkening to lightening kind of like it would if you did it for real. Okay, so. You're just gonna do this all the way around, all the way through your piece. And the trick to this particular finish is, I don't know if you're, you're seeing, catching what I'm doing, but I'm not stopping. 
I'm not going halfway and stopping because if you've dry brushed before, you know if you go and you stop, where you stop is going to leave a, a glob, a finished stopping point where you can see it in the paint. Don't want that. So I'm just dragging all the way across and then stopping, dragging all the way across, then stopping, dragging all the way across, then stopping. Doing the same thing all the way around. And the more paint that comes off, the more, um, the harder you're gonna have to press, obviously. So this is all to your liking, obviously. I mean, I'm just giving you how I did it for this particular piece that you guys are going to see in the finished product. You can decide, I want more French linen, I want less French linen. But this is how you're going to do it. It's real easy, like when we go back over this. And actually what I did on this piece is I think I went down into the cracks a little bit. So it took just the long edge of the brush just snuck down there a little bit. Not to overpower the cocoa, but just to add a little bit down in there so it wasn't just the raised areas that's getting my dry brushing. Now, if you cross hatch over top of each other, you can see you're going to get a little bit too much thickness. So you just kind of be careful with that. If you're going to run over top of an edge you've already done, that you might get a little bit more paint on there than what you were wanting to have done. But this is it. I mean, not a lot of paint, not a ton of effort, honestly, but a really cool effect when all the layering is done. And that's part of layering is you just have to trust in your process. Trust uh, that when it's all said and done, it's gonna look awesome. Because at first you're like, okay, yeah, that looks okay, Mark, I guess. But once you get all the layers on and the wax and the dark wax, it really starts to take on what you see in the final pictures. So that is the trick with dry brushing and layering a lot of times is the impatience of waiting to see what that final result is going to be and hoping it actually turns out the way you want it to. I know it was with me, especially when I was making this finish. I was like, man, I hope, I hope the next dry brush looks better. I hope the dark wax looks good when it goes on, but you just never know until it's done. And then you have that aha moment, like, wow, okay, yep, that was worth the trip and the steps it took and all that kind of stuff. So this is it. So you're just gonna go over it get another layer of color, another layer of what is going to end up being looking like texture, ultimately. And you're going to get that really cool kind of grained wood effect. And it's going to get grayer, or more gray, grayer, I don't know if that's a word or not. But it's going to get grayer as we go because we're lightening up slower and slower and slower. And then the brown dark wax over top is really going to deepen it and show all the different layers throughout and it's really going to be cool. So this is what we're doing. Uh, the old ochre is going to be pretty much the same process, but I'm going to go over that, over that as well, just to kind of show it as it's going on, what it looks like. And then just remember, you know, obviously if you use any Sloan paint before, it dries differently than it goes on wet. So, you know, you got to give it, a little bit to really see the effects of the French linen and the old ochre because it initially might not see it because it's going to be a little bit different as it goes on. So anyways, that's it. Like I said, you just got to trust in the process because the next step will add a little more and the wax will add a little more. The dark wax will be that finishing touch. Oh, and I even forgot about the distressing part. Distressing part is going to add a whole other ball of wax to it. So a little bit at a time, but it ends up looking really good in the end. So, but that's it for now. Okay, so we're on to our next step. So as you can see, we have the cocoa done in streaks, the French linen dry brushed in the same streaks to continue that uh, wood grain look. And the next is going to be one step lighter with the old ochre. So 
Again, we're going cocoa, French linen, old ochre to kind of go lighter. And then we're going to go with some distressing and then a clear wax and then the dark wax to bring back any of the darkness to it, which is going to make it that brown, almost olive in some light color that makes it that, you know, rustic barn door look. So I'm going to zoom in again while I'm doing the dry brushing just to kind of show you how I'm doing it. For this dry brushing, I'm going to do less of the recessed areas and more of just the, the raised flat and the raised cornered areas for this particular part. Um, and that's just because the first two layers was to cover the wood. The last layer is almost like a highlighting and then the dark wax at the end will be to get into those recessed areas to have the dark. So it'll have dark to light at the top. So, but again, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see a little closer what I'm doing. All right, so chip brush. I got my aluminum fold paper plate and I have my shop top to the side. Can't quite see in the picture. So we're going to get a little bit of old ochre out of here. I'm just going to drag it across my paper plate like we talked about in the previous one. Okay. And then I'm going to drag a little bit off onto my shop towel just to ensure I don't have any big globs. Especially for this step because the lighter color is definitely going to show more. And just a drag. Like I was saying in the previous video, you want one fluid motion from one side to the other without stopping. Again, if you stop, wherever you stop, it's going to pull and hit a little bit more of your brush and it's going to leave heavier marks, which is fine on the outsides because, you know, that, that kind of brings it that, that feather look from the outside in, but you don't want to stop in the middle and then you have this big glob here. So best you can go from one side to the other stop, one side to the other stop. Just like that. And you see I'm doing both sides the same. So where I stop, there's highlights on the corners of this side, highlights in the corners of this side. And now I'm just gonna play with the corner on this particular piece, the way it's set up. And get those corners real good. Again, not getting down into the recessed areas too much, but this one has some corners down in there. So I'm gonna sneak down in there a little bit all the way around and again this is why this dry brushing is a fun technique to do because it's not that hard I mean once you get the hang of it like how much to put on your brush and how much to you know discard off you're using just a teeny tiny bit of paint it gives a cool effect to what you're doing and it's not terribly difficult like I said so again, just going around, getting the edges. So if you look down in here, the recessed corner, I'm not touching. Just the raised edge, raised edge, raised edge. And there's a little slight raised edge down in the bottom. And then this all in here, I'm trying to leave alone. A little bit's gonna hit, no worries there. And then the big thing is you're just adding those highlights across the top. Okay, so we got the main flat area, and I'm just going to go around the outside. We're going to go one fluid motion, try to anyway. And today, try not to cross hatch over it as much because the white will really, or well, old ochre will really show if I do a whole lot. So, I don't know if you've watched another one of my videos or not, but when you're dry brushing, a lot of times you want to pull away. Pull away, pull away, and just drag it over those raised areas to get it. Just a little bit of paint off your brush and dragging it across like you're scraping the paint off the brush, kind of. Like if you want to cross an edge and you want to scrape whatever paint's off, you're kind of the same concept. Except you just have a, a teeny tiny amount of paint on there, so there's only a little bit's going to come off. And I'm hoping this comes through in the video, but it's looking really cool. I mean, basically, we've artificially created this really cool wood grained look through our steps of painting. 
And as I mentioned before, it's really all about how much you want to put on there to your particular style, like you want more or less. Like see, I'm dragging a line in right here. And I might do another one over here, and another one down here, just to kind of give it a unique look so it's not so perfectly uniform. It's like perfectly imperfect, as I say sometimes. You know, you want to have a, a rhyme or reason behind what you're doing to get you to that end result, but ultimately take some artistic license here and there to make it what you think is going to be the best. So that's it. Teeny tiny little amount of paint to this whole board. So hopefully you can see that really well. So streaks, streaks, streaks all the way across. And I have a board I wanted to bring up here to show it's a little dirty, but it's the same exact board. Look at that. You think you're not doing a whole lot until you see the before and after right next to each other. Because you're just doing really thin layers of paint. But look at the dramatic change that took on. So think about all the orange pieces of furniture we find and doing something cool like this to it. And then the addition of the clear wax will give it the texture it needs to give it that cool waxed painted look. And then the dark wax is what's ultimately going to set this whole piece off and really give it its look that it needs to have. And then of course a little distressing. So that's it for today. Next up we're going to do a little distressing. I'm going to use a wet sanding sponge so I can paint it or I can distress right here at the table inside. And that's just preference. If you want to do dry distressing or wet distressing. Uh, whichever works easiest for you, but I'll be able to do a little wet distressing in this video to show a little bit of how I do it, one of the ways I do it, and go over that process next. Howdy, I hope you're enjoying the video so far, and if you are, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know next time I add some new content, and please, please, please share. The biggest thing about my or motto or whatever you want to call it is create, share, inspire, and that's what I'm trying to do, create content to inspire people to start painting, to try new things, and just maybe step outside their comfort zone. So if you are enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe button, which will ultimately help me grow my channel and in turn, allow me to reach more people. Okay, so our paint's all dry. This is what we got. Hopefully you can see it really good in the video. You got all the pretty streaks of color from our first three coats. And the next step is going to be distressing. We're going to do the distressing first. So with it being dry paint and not waxed, you got your two choices, either dry or wet sand. And as I discussed earlier, I'm going to do a wet sand. And what I have is a sanding sponge which I love when I use, um, when I do wet sanding. People use rags or towels or all different kinds of stuff, but a lot of times the rag, it'll just take too much rubbing to get it off is what I've noticed. So I like using the sanding sponge and um, you just have to have a gentle hand because because it is a sanding block technically. Um, when you go to sand, it'll come off quicker which is ultimately less work for me, the way, the way I like it anyway, less work to, you know, have an actual like sandpaper like surface rather than just like a, you know, cotton rag, wet cotton rag or something like that. But it's all preference, all however you want to do it. So you just dip it in there, get it good and wet all the way through and then wring it out is usually what I do. So it's, it's damp to the touch enough where when you sand your piece, you're not going to get dust. And that's kind of the general idea is you could do sanding inside, um, less of a mess. Um, trying to think of other advantages. It's basically the same to me. So it just depends on, you know, your preference at the moment. Like, you know, if you want to do it inside, this would be the way to go. So but what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, kind of just show you how it's, you know, how I'm doing it and how it's going to look with a wet sanding block if you've not used one before. 
So I'm going to zoom in, go through all the steps of this, and then after this step, we'll get into the waxing, which is really going to totally transform this, what kind of looks grayish piece into the brown, uh, rusty barn door look that it's going to finish up like. Okay, so I have my wet sanding block, and it's not like drenched, but it's, you know, wet to the touch. So if I touch it, I have my fingers are wet, but it's not like dripping all over the place or anything. And then of course a shop towel handy in case I do get too much water, I can just simply wipe off. And of course the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to sand and then I'm going to wipe. I'm going to sand and then I'm going to wipe. So there's no lingering wet stuff laying around on here. So basically just going to go along the edge and for this particular piece, there it is. You start to see it pop out. But I don't know if you noticed, after I wiped, more came off because it's you're wetting the paint. So you just have to be careful. If it's your first time ever using a wet sanding block, the wiping part is definitely a part um, you're going to be like, oh no, too much came off. So do a little bit and then wipe and see, okay, well, okay, now I know how heavy handed I need to get. Um, corners I usually hit pretty good, especially when I'm doing a piece like this, and I actually did hit the corner really well. Corners and edges. And that's all you're gonna do. I mean, basically just dragging. And what's cool about the sanding block is there's edges all the way around except for these two sides. I'll have what kind this is in the descriptions you guys know where to find it if you're looking for something like this as well so that's it we're just going to go across the edges peel it back a little bit and give it that bring some of that wood color back to it just like so and I mean there's no real wrong way to do this it's just how much I guess that you want to distress a piece you know for this I was going for a beat up wood look so of course you know I wanted to pull back enough wood to bring back so it looked gave it that look I'm kind of thinking as I'm I'm doing here. So on the edges you'll see a little bit of the white starts to smear off into what's going on here. So you, you probably want to take your rag and just kind of pull it back with the green so you don't have like a big white streak. And with it being flat, this is the other cool part, is you go across the top without pushing down too hard and it's only going to get the raised edge areas which is you know, pretty much what I'm trying to do with this. Just get the raised edge areas. I don't want to get a lot of the flat. Because I didn't go with a heavy distress on this, just kind of a light to medium, I guess. Where I hit the corners and edges mostly. And if you watch one of my videos before, when doing the corners, you kind of push away. So, let me put it so you can see a little better. So, you're going to take and push away from the corner, kind of like that. And it get, just gives you that naturally distressed look where people might be touching it a lot. Where it gets thicker on the corner and less on the inside. That's kind of how I do it anyway. And with a wet sponge, it'll collect all that dust up for you. So what you have is just a little bucket handy. Dip it back in there, rinse all this off. This will all come right back off. And then you can go right back to what you're doing. But that's it. I mean, you just kind of do it to your liking. You might want a heavier distress where you get some, some of the long, you know, flat areas and stuff like that. But I did not with this. I just wanted the edges in the corners. Hopefully you can see that real well. But that's it. Like I said, next step will be the waxes, the clear, then the dark. And that's where this is totally going to even take a whole nother direction because it's all, 
We're going to do a really thin wax, dark wax glaze. So it's basically going to put a brown, almost like a brown paint over the whole thing. So it's really going to darken it up real good. So, but that's it for now. Okay, so now we got it all painted, distressed, and ready to do the waxing. So, basically going to get our wax, and we're just going to get it on there. And this has, if you haven't used any sun before, or if you have, you know, it's going to darken up the color a little bit. Just a slight little bit, not a whole big drastic change or anything like that, but enough that you're going to notice it. So you'll know what areas you can hit, which areas you have not. And since I distressed this, I don't have to worry about hitting the corners too hard. Um, but if you've not distressed the piece, you definitely want to be careful when you're brushing wax on over the paint because it will pull the paint off sometimes. So, and then you just work in sections. This is about the size section I want to do before I wipe off the excess. So this will be quick and painless for you guys to watch. Just be brushing it on real quick. Get it everywhere it needs to be. And then if you have some um, Wax gathered up in your corners, just jab your brush in there and get it out. You don't want big hunks of wax stuck into your corners. Okay, that's it. Take my rag, just gently wipe over the edges, or over the whole piece, I should say, and get all the excess off. And usually I like to wipe with the green. sheen to it right off the bat well, kind of a dull one and that's it that's all there's to it so just do a little bit at a time you wipe off the excess it'll have a slight sheen but a you know, not a whole lot, and then if you decide to buff it, or um, actually have a buffing brush to buff it, I recommend this. So uh, makes it much easier than trying to buff it with a shop towel, because the shop towel will, like, it'll buff, but it'll hold the wax while you're buffing. So the idea of the buffing is not to put more wax on. It's just to buff what's there. And a lot of times that's what a shop towel will do. You go to buff it and then it'll, the, whatever wax you're buffing onto the shop towel will then turn. And then you won't actually get the, the sheen or the shine that you're looking for from the buffing. So, But anyways, so that's that step. Our next step is going to be the dark wax glaze. And this time um, from any other time, if you've seen any of my other videos I've done, it's going to be quite a bit thinner. And I'm going to go over why and how it applies to this particular finish um, next. So, but that's it for now. Okay, now to our final step. Our final step is our dark wax glaze. And as I mentioned before, it's gonna be a quite a bit thinner than what's in the can directly. And what I, even I normally do, if you can, I don't know how well you can see it, but it drips down a little bit, more like a yogurt, a thin yogurt kind of consistency. Normally it's like a cake batter is how I like to do it where it's a little thicker. Um, but for this, we're doing a really controlled glaze in the streaks in which we're, we've done the finish. So it's just another added streaky, looking like the grain of the wood kind of thing that we're adding to it. So with that, I went a little thinner, and that seemed to really help be able to paint it on exactly how I wanted it. So, again, just going to dip, 
get you know a good amount and you were gonna go what I did was I went inside all the cracks and crevices first and dug it right down into those corners so I'm gonna get right into the corners real good I did that first and then work my way out from the inside areas Basically those cracks and crevices I wanted all the dark wax to get into real good. So okay, so that, that would be my first go of it. And this is probably about the size I do before I wipe off too. And then we're just going at it with it. We're gonna go with the green. And you know this will dry quick, so you don't want to, you know, take your time with it. And this is probably the biggest size you're gonna want to do too. This, the size of the area of your piece to get it before you start wiping off. I want to try to hurry through it. There's a lot of edges and stuff in this, so I probably wouldn't even do on this size because the edges and stuff you want to make sure you do correctly. You have the dark wax down into those edged areas, which is a little tricky. I happen to pick a sample board that made my job a little harder. But anyway, going with the grain. So side to side up here, up to down over here. And the trick for me is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to get that lined look. Because it likes to stick. So if you go back and forth, back and forth, it's going to drag that glaze back in a uniform, straight lined fashion. Exactly how I wanted this look to go. You know, sometimes you want it to not drag, you want to leave like thicker spots here and there. This I did not want that. I wanted nice streaks, lines of brown going through to mimic those that wood grain look that we've been doing all throughout this whole process. Okay, so something like that. And I'm not gonna lie, this is this is tricky. Because you have to just trust the wax do its job, pulling it back and forth, back and forth, but the more friction you get to it, the quicker it's going to dry, so you can feel, you'll feel the friction of it. Okay, then get your rag, and you're going to pull in the same direction as the grain that we have created, and it's going to get all over your rag, because there's a lot, and this is where something I don't normally do again, I'm going to go back and forth with it. To really rub the dark wax in one into all the lines that we've already created and two to really uh, give it that pronounced brown look throughout so you can start to build up so I'll just kind of if you folded it in force like you should you just find another side that doesn't have a ton on it Okay, hopefully you guys can see that really good. I'm trying to hurry through this so this wax doesn't dry on me. But what's awesome is the dry brushing gives you some texture because it sits up a little bit rather than just painting it on flatly. So that's where all this brown wax is going to sneak down in there and it looks like wood. Like a wood grain from like you found a beat up piece of wood laying on the side of the road kind of thing. Okay. Now to tackle the big area. All right, here we go. So again, just going with the grain. You know, and if you want to smear right over top of it because I'm going to push a lot of this right down into it. Keep going over top of it with some still in my shop towel. As long as the shop towel doesn't start ripping, then you can keep going, keep rubbing it in. And this is me pushing that dark wax into the paint instead of pulling it off completely or pulling it off and leaving just a little. We're putting a lot on there. Okay, so it's starting to feel like that friction is starting to pull on the shop towel. That's why when I want to flip it because it'll start ripping. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but it'll leave little pieces of your shop towel in your wax. 
if it starts to rip, you'll leave like little like almost like lint pieces of shop towel. So you just have to be careful if it gets too wet from the wax and the friction from the wax starts pulling it, it'll pull pieces right off. Okay. And again, we're going back and forth, back and forth. And just pushing that wax down into the paint. You know, normally you wax it on and you just pull it off, but this is not, that's not what we're doing here. Here we're, we're pushing it right down into the paint. And you can see all these pretty streaks of uh, dark waxness. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you get the look that you want. And again, what's cool about the wax is if you want more, you can add more, which I had to do in a couple spots. I wiped too much off. I just went back, slapped on another little coat and did some more of the back and forth, more of the grain that we created kind of thing. In some spots you might want darker, some spot you might want to have like the little spots of dark in there just because that's what a, a piece of wood would look like. A barn door is not going to have, it's not going to be perfect, it's going to have spots of darker here. You know, like there's a big glob of dark wax down here, but up here not so much, you know. And that's the beauty of all this just being an artistic thing. You do it whatever you think looks is going to look the best. So, that's pretty much it. I think that turned out pretty good. Pretty good representation of the finish from the piece that you guys are going to see. And again, I have the sample board over here. and kind of give you an idea. Okay, we started off with basically a kind of a flat orangey color. And this could work with a darker color brown or whatever color you happen to have. We gave it the three coats of paint, the clear wax, or the distressing, which gave it another layer, and then clearer than the dark. And you can see the dramatic change from one to the other. So that's Rustic Bar Door. Hope you guys like the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, you learned something, and ultimately at the end of the day, get inspired to try it. I really hope you do. If you do, be sure to tag Refurbished Gentleman on Instagram and or Facebook. And just let me know, let me see what you've done. And of course, if you have questions, drop them in the comments down below, or you can find me on Facebook on a more day-to-day -day basis. Uh, please, please, please subscribe, share this content out if you did enjoy it. And last but not least, if you do decide to utilize the um, products that I'm currently using that I'm recommending to duplicate this finish, you'll find everything in the links down below. They're all affiliate links and those affiliate links will continue to support me and allow me to provide free content for you. And in some cases, I do have discount codes from the companies that I work with that will allow you to get a little bit extra something off of your final purchase. So. All those things are at no cost to you, but they do help me in the end continue to do what I love to do. So everybody have a blessed day and as always, happy painting.